Hey, hey, Scooter here with uh, David from DKC Aviation today. How's it going, folks? Doing a little sky beacon installation? No. Tail beacon. Tail beacon installation. So uh, you have the sky beacon on yours, correct? That's correct. What do you think about the tail beacon? Uh, I think it's amazing. It actually goes on um, a little quicker than the, the sky beacon does on the wingtip. Uh, simple install. You only need one, and you don't have to worry about the asymmetry of uh, having one light and antenna on a wingtip and, and then a normal light on the other side. Aviation, the way it was meant to be. We put the uh, tail beacon here on, what are we calling this thing? Bluebird, Elvis. Blue suede shoes. Blue suede shoes, Vegas. I don't know what it's being called yet. But, uh, but notice the, the wing tip is nice and clear, nothing on it. And then even as we swing over here toward the tail, it's very, very inconspicuous, which is the reason I wanted the, uh, the tail bacon, was that it just it being that inconspicuous, something you just don't pick up on. Um, we did the test on it, and it, uh, it tested one hour after installation. I was okayed. And how long was the installation on this thing? Uh, what? 20 minutes. It took me longer to get the paperwork all typed up and, and filed with the FAA than it does to, to install the device. It's amazing. It was, it was fantastic. And as you can see here, we'll get a little closer. Notice you can now see the beacon sitting right there, but it it's inconspicuous. It's really nice. Um, so far, I've been happy with it. It shows up on ADS-B. So here, uh, here we've got uh, a Dave's, and you're going to recognize this. You know, Dave from DK City is, is Riddle. Yeah. And we got America here. Sorry. America. America. Yeah. So here's the uh, here's the sky beacon. The sky beacon. Yep. He's got on his. It's still pretty inconspicuous. It doesn't really stand cool. out. You see when I put my hand next to it, it's really not that big. Yeah. Um. Installation you said on the tail beacon was quicker than the. It is just a little bit quicker. Um, right. It's a little bit easier to plug and play. Um, one of the things I ran into on this airplane, um, the sky beacon is set up to install with machine screws because they hold a little bit better. The light on the Stinson was held in with some coarse thread screws just into the sheet metal and you know I didn't feel very confident putting an $1,800 piece of equipment on with just a couple of those so uh, we had to add some uh, some rib nuts so that we could use the machine screws. So it was, you know not terribly longer but just a little bit extra work. And then I've so. got a I got a Cessna 172 and right now we're putting the uh, the uh, tail beacon on the 172. That's yep. so much like the tail beacon. So we'll go show you what we're doing here uh, for the installation. Installation time should be what? At this point, maybe 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yep. Let's go check it out. Now, when I did this, we went on top. I found out the, uh, the old cap for the uh, position light was a little damaged. Right, Multiple little pieces. Damaged. You can see it's just old cracking These things after 40 years of sitting out in the sun the sun damages stuff and that's what it looks like you can see how brittle this thing is it just kind of comes off like he's breaking it and so again these things are fairly inexpensive in terms of the avionics but i don't really want to mount a two thousand dollar piece of equipment to this rudder <laughs> cap have it come off in flight bang around and, and now we have to buy another one so. it's a it's original to a 77 cessna so it was time anyway i had replaced all the plastic i have replaced the wing tips i had replaced all the fairing plastic even the ends on the elevator um i have the rudder butt this was the last piece to replace so i just decided to replace it so we have uh the rudder cap uh, just sitting here and we're going to put the beacon in place before we put it on top. And so that's why it's not on top. This would normally be done on top of the aircraft even, right? Yep. And just install it right on the airplane. Got it. So what, what I'll do is I'll put a link to our, uh, a link to the uh, DKC Aviation 
a Facebook page down below here if you and if someone was willing to, to pay flight time would you fly out to their place and put oh, it on absolutely. also? Absolutely. Okay. How far would you be willing to fly? Um try to keep it within a hundred nautical miles or so, but uh, if you're willing to cover the gas, I'll come out too. Do it right in their hangar? Yeah, absolutely. One hour installation time in their hangar. You... <laughs> Super bright. And inconspicuous. After it's installed, you do need to come outside, turn it on, and then I get a clear uh, view of the sky, and then it gets configured. It's gets configured just with a, a simple iPad application. That's right. You have the uh, transponder on, altitude. Oh, I think I do. Let me check. All right. As we look here, the ADSV is working. It's showing us at 1,800 feet. Look at that. We're at 1,800 feet. Um, 129 miles an hour. 129 knots. This is 130 on the uh, on the GPS. It's working. And how long do you need to fly to make it legal? Um, so, the folks of the rebates, they recommended a uh, minimum of a full hour in flight. Um, you just need to be up long enough for it to capture something for, to prove that it's working. But basically, just long enough that you're in the airspace, it can actually capture something. And then once you get back, you need to give it a good hour, hour and a half before you go submit for the report. There have been a few of them that are a 100% mode C failure. That is almost always because someone forgot to take the transponder and move it from the Oscar Fox Fox position to the Alpha Lima Tango position. It won't work if you don't turn it on. You know, you're doing a transponder certification for the most part. If you get to turn on the transponder, this is a pilot kind of thing to do. <laughs> Wind, calm, visibility, three, light, rain, Oh, well, we got better. Really? Nine, three. Nolan Pearl, Quintroy, minimum equipment, cutting grass, both sides of the runway and taxiway. Pilot, beware. So what are your VFR minimums? For traffic, 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 traffic.